Hey guys, my name is Jennifer and I am Genevieve Designs. Today we're going to continue on with the album that we've been working on. This is the Basically Amazing Printable Scrapbook Album uh, Size B. And we are using the paper collection Gingham Gardens by My Mind's Eye. And currently we're right, we're still in the uh, pandemic situation and everything's starting to open back up and all of that jazz, but I've gotten so far behind. So <laughs> I think what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to finish this album up in this video, finish it up with the exception of the journal that we're going to be putting in here, the removable traveler's notebook style journal that we're going to add in the middle. So I'm going to try to finish this one up. So the last video we did was this one. Uh, we did the matting and we added the little envelope insert into the pocket. So, I was going to add one more page to this fin back here, which I still am going to do. But we're going to keep it super simple because one of the reasons I like this type of binding is that you can continue to add pages on if you need be. So, we're going to add another page. Uh, page onto the side onto this fin here and we're going to keep it really flat and plain um, for that reason so if you go going through you're working through and you still have a bunch of pictures left you can still add pages onto here if you need to so there is a playlist for this album it starts from the beginning um, it starts with the introduction to these templates and then it takes you step by step all the way through this album and I will link that right here and down below in the description box if you would like to check it out. But I've already prepared some things. Um, so let's just jump right in. Let's just get started. So the templates are available in my Etsy shop. I will have them linked down below. And there's also an Amazon list specifically for this album, which is linked in the description box as well. And I try to link everything that I use in there to the best that I can. And if not, if it's at a different place or a different uh, shop or something, I do link things um, down there specifically, like mag magnets and things like that from different places. So my description box is full of all kinds of useful information. Okay, so the first thing is, Let's see here. I printed off page 8B. I've got a lot prepped for this here. <laughs> I printed off page uh, 8B. This is the main base page for this size album. And I printed it onto white cardstock. Again, I uh, left the long tab and cut three tabs off. This is 80 pound white cardstock. Um, I get it in uh, through Amazon. It, it's, um, what is it called, hammer mill? I really like it. It's not super heavy, but it's really soft feeling. Um, I like the feel of it. It's not rough. It's not drying. I don't know. It's hard to explain. But anyway, so I printed one of those off. I inked it up on both sides. I scored it and I taped it because this is going to get attached to the other side of that fit. Okay, so I have that prepped. And then I also printed two of the mats for this page, which is 55B, onto coffee stained paper, and I used the buffalo check, and we're going to mat the inside with these, just like we have been doing. So I got those two prepped and ready. Um, I need, where's the, oh, it's, it's over here. I hadn't got to it yet. So then on page 23A, I'm going to need the mat for that. Um, we used this in the previous couple videos back that we used one of these. So this is the other side. What happened to do it here? So this is the one we had left. So I scored it, inked it up on both sides. I cut the two short tabs off and we're going to put this in the middle first, or we might add it as a flip on the page. So I've got this prepped and ready, but I'm going to go ahead and get the mat for that, which is page 78 because we'll have to um, trace some mats out. All right, so I think I'm going to add this page in first. I'm just going to actually, I'm going to add this page onto this page. So it's going to go like this. Let's burnish that a little bit. And I'm going to kind of notch these corners really quick. Oops. 
and we're going to attach it down like this. We're going to attach it down to this edge over here, and it's just going to be in the middle. So let's do that. I'm going to take the paper backing off of the tape. That's 3 8 inch score tape. Then a little bit of glue stick just for wiggle room. And it's, you know, it is, I think this is supposed to be a permanent. I'm not really sure. And we're going to attach it down. We're going to come up a little bit from that score that's on there. And the score mark here, that score line that we made in order for it to flip nicely. Right? I'm just going to attach it down. Just like that. So it's going to go, it's going to attach right there, and then this flip is going to be in the middle here. Okay, so let's go ahead and attach these down. <laughs> so I'm just going to use tape runner. I don't think, I didn't do any sewing. No, I'm just going to use tape runner to attach this down. This is ATG. This is the Scotch ATG Advanced Tape Glider. And we're just going to map this page. Ooh. I may have cut my mat a little short. I printed it out, but I might have trimmed inside the lines a little. And while we're at it, let's attach this one onto this back part here. Now let's attach this to that fin there. And let's take the tape backing off. Ooh. And just a tiny bit of glue stick. And we're just going to literally sit this in here and attach it down. So I'm going to open this up and we're going to burnish from this side so we can flatten it out pretty good. All right, so then we've got this page attached just like that. So we're going to add, we're going to add some mats here because I want to put some three by four photos, which I already have printed out. These are from the add on photo mats and these are page these are page 13D. I printed onto white cardstock and then I stamped them. So I want to mat these front and back with uh, those. So these are my large cutoff pieces when I run the patterned paper through the printer. I cut it down to eight and a half wide and then cut it down to 11. So I'm just gonna pick, I think I'll just take the top two. And we're going to mat both sides like that. We may put a little decorative something or another on there. But, okay, so I'm going to take these two pieces. Oops. And I'm going to trace them and cut them, ink them, and I will be back. Okay, so here we are. I've, uh, nothing's attached down. I just have them cut out, and I was just looking at that, looking at this, to see what we could put on here. And I think, I think it would be cute to use the stamp set. Um, let me grab it. I'm trying to find it. There it is. This one just saying the Tim Holtz stamp set. I have it linked. Where's my? Oh, here it is. I have it on the block. I have it linked in my Amazon, and I thought it would be fun to use these sayings because this will fit perfectly in there, but I wanted to use some white cardstock. So we've got a ton of leftover cardstock. So I'm just gonna grab some. Cause I just need two. I guess I could I guess I could do a few more. 
than just two, but. So I'm gonna use the walnut stain. I'm gonna ink this up. big enough for two? Um, maybe. So now I'm just going to stamp some sentiments in there. Like I might do I love you. Some of these are like some of these are like um, card sentiments and stuff like that which is fine. Let me get a different step block so I can see. So I'm going to stamp out I love you. And then maybe I'll stamp Enjoy the Journey. I don't know where I stamped that off. So. Shaking. I've eaten today, so it's not that. <laughs> okay, so then I'm going to trim these out really fast, but I'm going to try to leave a bit of a border in my garbage bowl. So I think those would be cute in between there, just like that. Perfect. So let's go ahead and attach these things down. I'm just going to use the ATG. Okay, so they're both matte. Look, I kind of almost wish I didn't use any pattern paper, but you can't really see a lot of it, but I think it's nice. You can still see a pop of, of the patterns, but I think it turned out super cute. What do you think? Right, just super easy, fun. You can add as many of these layers as you'd like. Um, again, we're gonna leave these blank for now. We may or may not come back. We, I mean, you could put a five by seven photo here. You could put two four by six photos here. Um, do I have any printed? I think I do. You could literally, instead of matting these pages, you could put two four by six photos there. You could do the same thing. So I've probably told you that many times, but yeah, you can definitely put four by six photos or five by seven or whatever you want. All right, so this back page, we're gonna keep it simple. We're gonna do the same thing. Um, where'd it go? Do, 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 do. Like here, we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna do a side pocket because I'm gonna do a pocket back here as well, but I want it to be flat so that if we needed to, we could add some more to this little spine piece here, right? We can add some more to the fin, I mean, if we needed to. So I've already prepped that and I did find some more, I did find some more thread from a sewing machine. See, I ran out while prepping for this. So I did find another thingy, another um, roll, another roll, another spool <laughs> in my sewing stuff. Some of you may or may not know, I'm removing one of my studio rooms into a different room so that I can make the current studio room into a baby room for my granddaughter. And everything is really misplaced and displaced at the moment, so it's hard to find anything. <laughs> okay, nope, that's not it. So, for page, uh, for the back of this fin, uh, the mat for that is 55B. I actually traced this out onto the pattern paper. This is the pretty, um, it's got the pink, uh, what's that called? Uh, flannelly looking, flannelly. I'm not sure that's what it's called. I guess it could be called that. I don't know. Um, and I inked it up and I did this zigzag sewing all the way around and I punched a little half circle. Got my little pieces here just so you can see. 
there's one of their pieces. The little half circle, this was cut, used with a, or done with a two and a half inch. Let me reach around here, grab it. Yeah, two and a half inch circle punch. Ah. So I've got this piece. It's gonna go here on this page right there. It's gonna, it's gonna be attached on three sides. We'll do that with Fabri-Tac. And then on the back piece, we have this. So the cover mat is on page 50B. And what I did was I cut down the 12 by 12, the 12 by 12 cardstock. It was originally this color, and that's what it is on the back. I printed one of the shades of color, number 12 is what I used. I printed the shades of color, the pink on there, and then this was left over from another piece that we used. Um, it was a, there, but where, where's the piece? Or was it here? I think it was right there. Something like that. So I just traced out this part. So I printed this one out, but I traced this one out to match the width. And then I took it, I sewed the top part here. And then I attached it. See how it's a full sheet? It's the full sheet of this. And then I attached this little pocket onto the top. And I thought it was super cute because it kind of, I matched it up perfectly to where it wasn't interrupted. So you, if you were reading it, you would still flow. And then I did the same half circle uh, punch up here because I thought that would be fun to have a side pocket on the cover and then have a pocket here. So let's go ahead and attach these down really quick. And this is like an, an excellent space for like extra storage, uh, uh, extra things or some ephemera pieces, uh, memorabilia. If you've got extra pictures, you don't know where to put. These little side pockets are great places for that. I need to get me another Fabri-Tac. The stores are starting to open, but I haven't really been out anywhere. Plus, I've been babysitting my granddaughter. And I don't want to take her anywhere. Oh, she started crawling the other day, you guys. Oh, my gosh. <sighs> Anyways. Um... Like, I had her yesterday, and she's so much fun. And I didn't want to take her anywhere, but she wears me out, too. Like, there's a reason young people have babies. <laughs> so. So, we're just going to go ahead and attach this down. Right? So, now we got this side pocket here. And then, we're going to attach this down, just the three sides. Wow, look at that bubble. Let's see if I can spread it out. I have to trim some of those bits off. Okay, so we're going to mat the cover. Just like so. The inside of the cover. And that doesn't put too much bulk, but it also allows for a lot of little hidden little tuck spots. And of course, we got our pocket there. Okay, so I haven't been putting anything in these side pockets that we've been making out of the mats. We're just gonna leave those empty um, for now. Those would be great spots to add things to later. You know, like add little booklets or just stray things. Like I was saying, like if, uh, your own personal ephemera and that stuff, memorabilia and that kind of thing. Great place to put that stuff. And that way you still have it with your album, but it's not like in your face. Some stuff you just don't need to see, like, you know, it doesn't need to be up front and in your face. So that's a good place for things like that. But I do wanna put some photo mats here. So I have printed out, I've got a whole slew of things here. These are add-on photo mats. And I did uh, a page of three by four. And those are on page, again, 13D in the add-on photo mats. And then I did a page of 7BD, again, add-on photo mats. And then I did a page of 1AC, okay? 
also for the three befores, there's nothing on the back here. I went ahead and stamped two like that. And then I have one that's stamped like this. Hang on, where's the other one? There's four on that page. And then I have like a, just a row that I'm not sure I'm gonna be using. Maybe, we'll see. And then on the four by six, I stamped one and I may not be using this one. And then on the five by seven, I stamped one and I may not be using this one. But after I printed this out, um, I ran it through my printer again, and this one I printed the patchwork background design on. So it's from my background sets, and as of right this moment, they are not available any longer. I left them up for sale for like a month, well, over a month, really, um, because of, you know, the pandemic and all of that. But they'll be back again in October. Um... But I did leave the black and white set up. I feel like that'd be fun. You could have that black and white set can be used in just about any album you make. Just to add a little pop of black and white. I think it's just so pretty. Okay, so I printed the patchwork onto the back. Okay, so we may not be using one. But on the 4 by 6 ones, I, I, this was an accident. <laughs> um, I mean, I meant to print something on the back side of it. But I, in the background designs, they come in sets. And then the one with the patchwork background design, it has the... Um, vintage notebook what did i call it vintage note paper design in it and i clicked that one instead of the um script lines because <laughs> that's what we've been using through the whole thing uh, because the script lines is not in that same background design set so anyway it was a mistake but it'll work just fine right so i have these two printed out one of them i have stamped uh four by six so my thought is here's my thoughts so on the back side of this five by seven, I was thinking about putting two three by four photo mats. So you add your three by four photos there. And then on the back side of this four by six photo mat, adding one of the three by four photo mats. What do you think? It's like you're getting, you know, a bunch of bang for your buck, right? Or you could, you could actually put another 4 by 6 photo on the back of there, right? But anyway, I thought this was a cute idea. I don't know if I've done it yet so far. I don't think I have. I may have. I don't know. But let's add them in. And these are going to go in this little back spot here. This little back pocket. And there might be some more stuff added by the end, by the end, by the time we're finished. But for now, I'm just going to try to center this. And I don't know if I did a good job or not. Eh, it's okay. So on the back side of our 4x6 photo, net, photo mat, we got a 3x4 photo mat. So there's one. And then let's add these two. Not too bad. It's maybe a little crooked. Maybe. Maybe. But that's okay. I don't care. Okay, so now we got the two 3x4s on the back of the 5x7. I totally love this idea i totally dig it totally totally okay so i am going to set these aside in the stuff because I'm, I'm building quite a collection of little random bits like i have two more photo mats that don't have any stamping on them from something i printed i don't remember i have just a bunch of random things um still sitting here <laughs> And I can't remember because there's so much time passes between when I film because of just how crazy everything has been lately. With my son graduating high school and I don't know, just watching the grandbaby at random times. It's just been, it's just been something trying to concentrate and be creative. And I know I've talked about this before, but it's just, it's just, it's been more of a struggle than I thought it ever would be. <laughs> so... Oh, here, you know, you could put a 5 by 7 here, too, if you would like. If you would have thought of this ahead of time, you could have not punched it. But again, who cares? You might want to leave that. Well, you could, if you wanted to. You could put a 4 by 6 right? So, don't forget, you can totally mat, put photo mats on these blank pages as well. We kind of left them like this all throughout the album. So, I'm going to put these aside for now. One of the things I want to do... I'm going to take my ink and I'm going to go around the edge of my album all the way around. And I think I'm going to do it in the front and the back. The inside and the outside. Meaning this side here. Okay. Okay. Let's start on the covers. 
let's get this done. Um, we did literally just finished doing this, so let's let's get the covers done. The first thing I want to do is page 48. We had printed this off because we used some of these little corners. Let me show you what it looks like before we cut into it. This is the page we printed off right here, on page 48, and we used this first set of corners um, on a page. Well, now we're going to use these two set of corners. Actually, I better grab the mat. I'm going to need the mat for that. So I cut them out, and for one of the sets, I left the tabs on, and then the other set, I cut the tabs off. What we're going to do is we're going to slide them over these corners, just like this. Is that not the cutest? And then we're going to mat them. So we're going to slide them, sorry about the glare, <laughs> over the corners. So let me show, I already put that one together, but let me show you how I did this. I did go ahead and mark them uh, one, one, and two, two, so that that way I would not, because they fit perfectly um, on top of each other, so that way I wouldn't get confused. So I'm just going to flip this over. I've got tape on them, inked. I've even inked the inside, just in case you could see it. And I'm going to remove the tape on one of these pieces. And I inked the back of this too, just in case you could see the edges. And then we're going to line up the one side that the tape is still on. And we're going to, whoa, the tape is now stuck to me. And then we're going to place this down just like that. Just like that. Then we're going to open it up and take the backing off of this tape. And squish it down. Okay, so then this one will go, let's see, oh, let me get the inside of those tabs really quick. So then this one will go here. So we'll have one on each corner. I think that's super cute. Plus the, those uh, little sharp uh, craft plastic corners are kind of sharp. Those little sharp plus, yeah, you knew what I meant. Those <laughs> craft plastic corners are sharp. I'm gonna set this aside just so I don't lose it because I don't have a mat for those yet. Um, but I think that is adorable, actually. Let's go ahead and glue it down. So I'm going to use the Fabri-Tac by Beacon. I just think it's cute because this way you have that photo corner on the front and the back. There's no raw edge. Super cute. Super, super, super cute. All right. So I'm just going to try to get some glue in here. Maybe not go right to the edge. And we're just going to slide that on there until it meets in the corner. That is so cute. I like it. Okay, and then this one goes on that corner. Yeah, I like. Yeah, so we're gonna be matting these. So I'm not worried about the race and the numbers or anything, but I don't know what we're gonna mat them with just yet. So, super cute. Okay, so I've already prepped what I'm gonna do for the cover. So I thought I would show you. Uh, whoops. So cover B is on page 2B, but the mat for that is on page 50, wait, what, what is that now? Does that say 52B? The mat for the, no, where's my mat? Where's my mat? Oh, <laughs> the mat for that, I already have it out, is on page 50B, so we're gonna need that, and then we're also gonna need the mats for both the four-page spine and the two-page spine, and those are on page 53. And I will show you why. So if you open this book up flat, let's just go ahead and do it. I'm gonna open it up in the center. It looks like that. So what you got here is you've got the main cover, four page mat, 
two page mat. So we're going to need two of the two page mat because we're going to do the inside as well. Okay. So how I did, what I decided to do was take my favorite sheet, which is this one, right? The 12 by 12. And I'm going to show you what I did. So I lined it up like this. Oops, that's the extra piece. I lined those pieces up on the 12 by 12, just like this. And then there's that leftover piece. And then I believe, is that down here? That's down here. So this is exact, that is the whole 12 by 12 sheet right there. So I traced them all out in order. And then this piece here, I just traced out of a scrap piece that I had in the scraps. This is one of the shades of color, number 22. So I did the same thing with that one, just traced it out. So I cut it out, inked everything up. And then for the back cover, I did like a zigzag stitch, but because of my string, the thread that I found is thicker and I think it's more like upholstery thread more so than what the uh, cotton stuff that I have in the, um, see, look at the bottom. See, this is what it should look like. So this is like more of a regular cotton type, generic -y type thread. And then this one I think is actually, see how it's sewn different. It's just thicker. So I think it messed up the sew, but I don't care. It looks fine. So I did, I sewed all the way around it. And then I sewed all the way around the spine piece. And then for this one, I did that scalloped edge with, see the scalloped edge, with these scallop scissors, right? These are marked or linked in my Amazon. And um, I followed the line that I traced. So it's actually a little bit longer than the mat itself, I think. Yeah, because I used that line that I made as a guide for the points of those little scallops. So I did that to both of these pieces. Um, and then I did a straight stitch all the way around these pieces. And then I did some random zigzaggies. Okay. So those are the pieces I have prepped for the cover. And as a matter of fact, let me move these mats. This is my favorite, favorite page out of this paper collection. So I had to use it on the cover. That was my whole... Thought. So let me pull the cover over here and let's add these in. I don't think any of these are going to be tucks. I had contemplated fussy cutting out around these flowers to make like a pocket, but I don't think I'm going to do that. I think I'm going, because they're so small, small, like intricate, intricate. <laughs> I feel like it might get caught a lot. So I'm going to take my fiber attack and I'm going to glue all three of these pieces down and I'll probably even go and glue that one down on the inside. And I'm just going to run it along the edges here because of that stitching. All right, I'm gonna try to I'm gonna try to block this with something. This glare here. There we go. <laughs> All right, I've already prepared some things for the back cover, and these are all from the embellishment pack except for this little heart that I cut out of some pattern paper um, previously, and then they're all glued together. But then I stitched around this little black label, so I thought that would be super cute down here at the bottom just to break it up a little bit. And then this one says, "What a wonderful world," and I thought. That might be cute um, up top. Just a super simple, not even making it a tuck. We're just going to glue it down. What do you think? Do we like that idea? I'm going to use our glitter glue because we're doing paper to paper here and it should be just fine. So I inked everything up um, already. And I just thought it would be simple and cute and it wouldn't, it'll break up that green just a little, but it wouldn't be too, too much. Plus the whole beehive thing, my mom was a beekeeper. And remember all of these templates that I've made for the Basically Amazing were inspired by my mom and dad's scrapbooks. I don't know, it's just kind of like an homage to her. Is that the right way to say that word? <laughs> I don't know. Um, 
but anyway so let's glue this down just a simple little embellishment not a big deal I guess I could have used a glue stick because this is literally just paper to paper I have to look up in my monitor to see if I'm straight there we go right and that's it I think that, that's it that's all I'm gonna do to the back cover I love this paper and I don't want to cover up too much of it all right so then here I was thinking I actually have a couple ideas but let me grab my original idea I've got my chipboard pieces and my stickers um, I was thinking about uh oh using uh, this piece <laughs> since it's popping out let's use this piece <laughs> Um, here, and then putting this Love Grows in the center of it. What do we think? I thought that was kind of cute. I am going to ink this up, and then we'll put a little glue on it and commit, and then that way it won't matter. It's done. What's done is done, right? Before I stick that down. At least I think that's what I want to do. Let's just do it. Or should I put it down here at the bottom? All those pretty flat now. Let's put it up here. Up here towards the top. And then let's put this on here. Love grows. Um, let's see. Maybe pull it down towards the bottom just a little bit. I'm having to look into my monitor to see if I got on there right. Okay, it's wiggly wiggly. Like that. So then the front cover. Right, that looks cute all by itself, I think. <laughs> Y'all might be like, uh. I don't think so. <laughs> I like it. All right, let me try to, I guess I could leave that little bit of a glare there. All right, so the next idea I have is using some of the add-on photo mats. Oh, not that one, that one's got a print on it. So I was thinking about maybe doing a four by six like this. And then I printed off one of the shades of color. I think this is number 12. And then I ran it through the embossing photo that that uh, cherry blossom from Darice embossing photo. And then I did the uh, taking off of the you know edge to kind of taking off the color really to kind of make it look white. So I thought about maybe matting that photo mat with that, and then putting a three by four on there. And I'm not sure what else. Anyone have any thoughts <laughs> on that? Mm -hmm. um, so I thought about doing that and then maybe using a chipboard piece. Let's see, what do we got? We got Delightful. Okay, maybe do like a Delightful. It's kind of cute. Or what else we got? We got the blue flower. We could put a blue flower. Oh, easy. No, that looks like it might be a little big. We might do delightful. But whatever we do, we got to do it on the other side as well. So that's kind of that's kind of cute. Let's prep these. So I need to corner chomp these. I'm just going to use this corner. I'm going to use the large angle, I guess, and do all four corners. Yeah, I went ahead and prepped two of these in the anticipation that this was what I was going to do, but um, I'm not sure. there. 
like that. And then this would be on top. Okay, I think I've made some decisions. It's actually the next day. I uh, have to record this in little bits at a time um, just because of current circumstances and when I can find the quiet the quiet time to record. So, next day. And I did go ahead and mat the two photo or the two um, um, what are those called? Photo corners <laughs> on both sides. And I used the leftover piece from where we cut all of the pieces from the cover. So this was that leftover piece. So I just traced the corners, uh, all four mats on there and just inked them up and attached them down. And I'm probably gonna leave them. I think I'm gonna leave them like that, probably. Not 100%, I mean, things always can change, so. <laughs> but I have made some decisions about what I wanna do on the front cover, so. I'm gonna scooch this to the side for a second and then we'll get the stuff out. And of course, my battery died. <laughs> I think it's just gonna be one of those weeks. I really do. <laughs> okay, so I did make the decisions that I wanted to make. So first off, I did go ahead and make the two photo mat thingies that I was talking about. So this is like a four by six. This is the add-on photo mat, and then this is the four by six kind of photo. And then I ran it through the embossing machine, and I um, used my what's this called? Um, buffer, you know, sandpaper buffer thingy. <laughs> I, where, where, what is this called? Jeez Louise. Um, and took the color off of the raised areas just to give it a little bit more. You can see it better when I hold it like in a different, dire different direction. Um, and then I put the three by four add-on photo mat on top. Okay, so I made two of these, one for the front of the cover and one for behind the front cover. Um, because it's see-through so you'll be able to see on both sides. So I went ahead and prepped those. They're ready to go. So then I was thinking, what, you know, something was just bothering me. I just, I don't know, I didn't like something. Something wasn't jiving. So I had the idea of printing page 17 BD, which is uh, the page for a four by six photo mat. Uh, I'm all, actually, let's put that there so we can get rid of some of that glare. I printed that onto coffee stained regular paper okay so what I did was I printed it out both out or I printed the page out onto coffee stained paper then I cut one out where I left one tab and then I cut this one out where I took these three tabs off on both of them I left this tab on because I wanted to use my scalloped edge scissors on the edge there, but I also still wanted to be able to apply the add-on photo mat and it still have enough room. So I left, so on one of these, I left both of the short tabs and then on the other, I just, I left one of the short tabs. Okay, so, and I started to put it together and I was like, whoop, stop, stop, you gotta show them what you're doing. <laughs> so I did put a scored the one that I left, you know, these three tabs. I scored it, folded it, inked it up, put tape on it, and I attached it to the other piece here so that when I fold it up, I could cut it together and it would match up. So it kind of looks like a paper bag now. So that's exactly what we're doing. We're making like a pocket for the front cover. So let's Take the tape backing off, and we can attach it together. Oh, shoot. I'm gonna go ahead and use a little bit of glue stick. just for some wiggle room, but it should go together perfectly. But when you're dealing with, this is just regular, you know, printer, copy paper paper. It's not cardstock or anything. Um, there we go. 
perfect. And you'll notice that too, I did turn it the other way. I printed on one side and um, the other side is what I have, uh, you know, on the outside. <laughs> Uh, just because when I printed it out, I printed it on the darker side, and I kind of liked the lighter side better. So then we are going to add these on to there. Actually, we're going to add one onto the front here, and then we're going to add it to this book cover. Right, we're going to add it here, and then we're going to flip it over and add this one to the back side. So let's start by adding this to the to the pocket we made. I'm just going to use the tape runner and I'm going to do a little bit of extra tape since this is going to be on the cover. I've got some black ink. I was playing with my pen and ink earlier. Let's do it like this. My quill pen and ink that I showed in my uh, Memories, magnets, and mem memoirs video. Okay, and I did make a tag, and I will just explain this tag to you. I just grabbed some of the scraps that I had, and that's kind of what I based it off of. I didn't use a 4x6 photo or anything, but the width of the base of the tag is that is a three and a half by six and a quarter, and it is from this is just coffee stained paper, though some of the leftover scraps. This was a leftover scrap, so this piece here is three and a quarter by six, and this piece back here is three and a quarter by six. Then I scallop punched out of some leftover paper that I made it to where I, when I scallop punched it, the word grateful was right in the middle, and then I cut that scalloped circle in half and added a whole reinforcement. Uh, oh, I was going to say, did I put one on the back? And then a piece of twine. That's it. I just thought that was super cute, and you'll be able to see it from both sides of the cover. And then that will go, that will be, um, the. you can have as many inserts as you would like, but I just thought that was a super cute, it almost looks like a tag topper kind of thing. I just thought it was cute. Okay, so we're going to add it to the cover. I just need to decide exactly where I would like to add it. I like it. I think I'm going to use fabric tack because we're going on to a plastic substance. Substance? What would that be? Substrate? Media? Craft plastic? What would that be called? And I'm going to be careful not to go to the edges. I'm just going to come about a half an inch away from the edge. And I'm a bit generous, adding some glue inside here. Okay, and then I'm going to add this on here. There we go. Boom. I'm going to put a little bit of pressure on there. I'm going to pull this tag out a little bit. The tag probably could be longer. I probably could have made it um, like a taller tag. But, you know. So you can see through the cover there that you can see all the glue there. So that's why I was like, we need to stay about a half an inch away from the edge so that we can add this onto the back here. And it'll have all that glue, but still have the frame of the coffee stained faux paper bag look that we had going on there. Whoops. Well, shoot. Oh, that. I had a mess um, on my space here. I mean, it was, it was a covered in ideas that I was trying to figure out what I wanted to do and I couldn't find so I was cleaning it up and I couldn't find one piece and I just found it on the floor of course that's where it would be on the floor so let's do this we'll just add this and it looks fabulous 
I love it. Yeah, perfect. I like it. I think that worked out just fine. Okay, so then I had some other ideas, but I haven't really ironed them out. I was going to put maybe one of these chipboard pieces on here, just like as an accent color or an accent period, uh, but I can't decide if I want to do that or not. So, I'm thinking we may. I mean, why not? Either that or something like this frame here, maybe. We might be able to do something like that. That might be kind of cute. Maybe we could put, whoop. This is a two-piece frame, so maybe we could put this on the back here. That's probably, that's a good idea. Let's put this on. I'm going to add some glue. We'll just put it on. We'll just go ahead and add it. And this time I'm going to get my fiber, I mean, my, our glitter glue out. My fiber tack is almost done. It's almost done. <laughs> it's, it's done working with me. Okay. Oh, I, well, I should have thought to leave some space there to tuck the picture. So you guys don't forget to do that. That was bad on my part. So that's cute. You can't see it on the other side. Okay, let's flip it over and let's put this one. And I'm going to ink the edges really quick. Oh, I could maybe put one of the enamel dots on here because that'd be kind of cute. Let's put it, let's glue it down. So now we're at the stage where ju we just need to start making commitments to our idea, our thought, of what we want to do. We just need to do it. We do have one more thing to make, um, a journal. So we may not go through and add a bunch of embellishments just yet um, because we still need some for the journal that we're going to make. So we need to keep that in mind. Should we add some enamel dots? I haven't really used a lot of them, have I? I thought they might be fun to use, the colors and stuff. But so far, nothing's like jumped out at me. It's like, yeah, that you, 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 you need that. <laughs> you need that there. I mean, a few things have, but whoops. And that one just keeps getting attached to my finger. Every time I mess with that, it seems like I need to add a glue dot to it or something. All right, I just did a really quick, like, flip through, um, just flip through the album really fast. And I think what we're going to do now is we're going to do the fins. We're going to cover the fins and then save all of the everything else that we have. We're going to save that for the, um, so that we can do the journal, the Traveler's Notebook style journal, scrappy journal type thing for the middle. And then we may come back and add more embellishments to the album. Or maybe I'll just come do a last minute, a last flip through of everything. That might be our plan. So let me get, let me prep the things that we need for the fin. And I will be right back. Be right back. <laughs> I printed page 55B from the templates using the patchwork design. So this is actually the mat for the main base page is what it is. But then I cut it up into 11 strips that are 3 8 inch wide. So I kept the height of the mat for that page, but then I cut it into skinny little 3 8 inch strips. And I needed 11 for my album. So you just need to go through and count how many of these spaces here that you have and that's how many you're gonna need. So this is what I have left over from that page. Um, so I'm just going to stick it in with all of my other large scraps here and use it for something else. So while I was, um, oh, after I, sorry, after I cut them into strips, I inked um, all the edges. So I just put some regular tape on it. You could use wet glue if you wanted to um, on the back. I just really did a strip, but I missed the top. So, and you just want to go through and add them onto these, these spaces. You don't, this is just an extra detail. You, if you do not have to do that detail if you do not want it, but I cut one for each one of the spaces. So like there's three right here and I'm not going to try to match them up. 
I'm just going to go through and add a strip to each space and not really worry about if they match or not. I'm going to try to keep them aligned at least at the top or the bottom but other than that it's really easy to add these little strips. It's a little bit of a tedious thing to ink them <laughs> but it's, a, it's an easy, easy, easy thing to do. And it just gives that little finishing touch. So I'm going to continue on doing this all the way through here. Okay, so that is all done. So, if you are not going to make a journal that we're going to put here, we're going to do these elastic, um, string elastic through here, and we're going to make a journal to go in here. And if you're not going to do that, then um, then you're, you're done. Or you can go ahead and use all of your leftover embellishments and things and go through and jazz up all of your different pages. Like, you could totally do some fun stuff with your leftover bits like the printed envelopes and things like that that we have that we we printed throughout the throughout the process the step-by-step -step process um we've got a lot of little bits left over but i'm gonna save mine but you can't if you're not going to be making a journal then you can feel free to go ahead and have at it and just um jazz everything right up so if you are going to make a journal, then um, you might want to hang on to all of your bits and pieces. So that'll be the next thing that we do. We're going to, so if you're done, if you're not making a journal, we're done making this album. You're done making this album. And it's a big one. It's a chunky, chunky, chunky album. And there is a lot in here. A lot of photos can fit in here. A lot of pages. A lot of hidden little tuck spots. You can add as much as you want in these albums. All right, guys, I am super excited to get started on the journal. So that will be the next video. And I'm going to try to squeeze in the tape dispenser video. And we're going to do some uh, laminating. Um, not laminating. We're going to do some of the foiling stuff. I'm going to show you how to use the black and white uh, background designs for foiling. I'm going to try to squeeze that in. And I feel like there was another one that I was going to try to squeeze in. At some point, like an extra video, I can't remember what it was now. And then after all of that, we're going to start on the A album. So hopefully that won't be too much longer to get started on that album. So anyway, I'm super excited. I think this album turned out beautiful. So um, if you like this video and you like this album, give me a thumbs up. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. And don't forget to check out the description box for all of the important info. And I will see you guys next time. Bye.